Good morning, everybody. We've got a very special sunrise today in Magdala. In the middle of December, yesterday on the 12th of December, big news. And here we have the archaeologist of Magdala fame, Dina Avshalon Gurney. <laughs> Dina Boker Tov, good morning. What's so special about this new sunrise in Magdala today? Listen, today we are standing actually in the middle of a new synagogue in Magdala, the second synagogue in this village, beautiful big village, Magdala, with, um, with the Maria Magdalena that's born here. And uh, that's the, the that's continuation of the first uh, synagogue that we found in 2009. Now, in just about 100 meters, West to the first synagogue we're excavating today, and you, we are standing now in the middle of the second synagogue uh, from the same period, from the early Roman period, from the first century AD, uh, which is built exactly like the first synagogue with benches around, plastered walls, uh, and uh, uh, also a small room with a shelf. Uh, that there they put the uh, scrolls and from there they took the scrolls to the synagogue and they were there they were reading and studying in this beautiful house in the middle and actually what's very important here that we excavated also the western uh, neighborhood of Magdala and it's a huge place it's a huge uh, neighborhood we have roads and buildings and maybe shops and so on and I think it's adding to the, for the, to the information and the story of Mandala uh, from the first, from the early Roman period, from the time that the second temple in Jerusalem is working, and here we have a community that connected with the temple. And this is beautiful, and we are here today. Thank you. I'm so happy, Dina. Uh, tell me, Dina. Uh, some people are asking about the significance of two synagogues in one first-century town. This is very important. Uh, interesting. It did, actually, this is the first time it's happening. The it's first time. The first time we don't have something like this, like that. Uh, even in the latest, uh, uh, you know, uh, villages, later villages in the fifth or sixth century AD, we don't have both two synagogues in one place. And here, it's unique. Actually, Magdala is unique, and this is again yeah. a unique, <laughs> unique uh, item. And uh, we don't have the really the answer, but from the story, from the, the sources, from the Jewish and the Christian sources, we understand that uh, this synagogue is a gathering, it's kind of a gathering house, and that's what the community needs to use, so kind of a, a community a gathering house, okay? So, because, and we know from the sources that uh, it is a very big village, and here we're excavating a very big neighborhood. So we presume that this synagogue served these people who live in the western uh, neighborhood, okay? So we think from here, from this, this uh, two synagogues we have in Mandela, that actually in a big village like this, every, every, every neighborhood had its own gathering house. That was very, that is very interesting and this is very important and it's put light. Uh, new uh, information about how the how the community life was like. Thank you, Dina. Thank you for taking time out because you have all wonderful workers here uh, at the dig and lots going on. So we let you. We wish you much more blessings here. Many more blessings. It's Thank you very much. I invite everybody to come to Israel and visit Magdala, the beautiful site, and um, you have a. Place to come. Thank you, Dina. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yes. People, what, what a splendid uh, discovery. And if you look across here, we have Magdala. I needed to keep the camera there on Dina. I'm not a pro for interviewing, but here you have the synagogue and Magdala is right across the street. That's the, the old entrance there. And you can see the roof, the lower roof is covering the synagogue. So that's just about 150 yards away, 200 yards away. I, I'm not sure what the exact is, maybe 200 yards away. There's hardly room for two football fields. And here we have a lot of work continuing because there's the pressure to, um, this is the room with the bench, the extra uh, benches. 
So this is, I can't show you too much more detail now because that's the prerogative of the archaeologists who discover and the Antiquities Authority to publish the details of this discovery. But what a, a great gift to be here. Because of this discovery now, they have to go and investigate more areas immediately around it. The whole purpose of this dig was actually to create a better, safer intersection here, the road going west here and then the road going north. This is the 90 here where you see the main traffic, but there's an intersection that's very dangerous. And we've had, seen a lot of accidents over the years. So this is the big news today from Magda. There's a link inside the text here. And I also want to draw your attention to Kathleen's daily advent um, uh, post, which is very beautiful. And there's also a link in there for the last few days. Uh, if check on it. This is a short little post, short and sweet, and a beautiful preparation thought for as we approach Christmas. And then just a commentary on the readings today, so we don't leave out that stable part of our stable part of our our uh, sunrises. Stroll and chat is um, uh, the readings today is a very interesting character, Balaam a prophet in the Old Testament times who was not from God's chosen people. He was uh, a foreigner and he was being asked to prophesy on behalf of the king of Moab who was scared of the chosen people and he didn't prophesy according to that uh, king's demands but he actually became an oracle of God for the future coming of salvation. And that's an amazing thing. And in the gospel as well, we see a great tension. And it really points out that our faith is not a matter of signs and seeing stuff. Okay, signs are helpful, but when it comes down to it, when, when the rubber hits the road, it's about our will accepting the gift of faith. And the will has a big part. It's not just about information. It's about where do we stand regarding the uh, life and that's also about life I mean just even let's take digging you might be able to write a book about digging but if you don't get out and dig you really don't know digging and we can have so many thoughts and reflections and emotions about our faith and but if we don't go out and do it and live by it it's a life it's not just a worldview it's not just uh, it's not just um, an attitude, it's actually a way of life to live by faith, to live to the gifts that are given to us, to receive them, to welcome them, not just to ponder them and think about them, to welcome them. So we can have that big uh, thought today, that ask for that grace today, to have open hearts, to accept the great gift that's coming to us through our faith and to adjust our lives according to that. I'm going to do a little spot now on Instagram. I'm not sure exactly which moment I will start. We will invite Dina as well. She's going to say a, a brief word on Instagram about uh, this discovery, so it can also be posted on Instagram. God bless you. See you later, alligators. We leave it like that for today.